This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all, even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture. Still, treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Welcome to the Chic Assignment Check-In for July. Hello everyone, Jennifer here and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. The Chic Assignment Check-In is here for July. That was a poem by Rumi and it is so profound I had to read it first. This being human is a guest house. How deep is that poem? Every morning a new arrival. What comes to us? Joy, sorrow, pain, exaltation, love these things that come to us and we are the guest house for them. And, and Rumi is saying here that we should welcome and entertain them all. There's a reason why they are there. So I found that poem to be deeply profound. And later on in this video, I'm going to be reading much more of Rumi's poetry. The Sheik assignment is brought to us by the Sheik Society, which is my private membership group here on YouTube. You are going to see some names scrolling down below. This is one of the upper tiers, so it is only $1.99 a month to join my Sheik Society. And I do one vodcast every Friday and we go live together once a month or we do a Zoom call. There are two upper tiers and you're seeing one of them down below. They get their names mentioned in one video a month and at the end of this video I'm also going to be mentioning the elegant connoisseurs. Many of them have businesses or they have really interesting things to offer you or they're just really high patrons of the channel. So I was thinking about this before I shot this video and I thought why do I do the chic assignment and why is this my favorite series on the channel? This is is why I love the chic assignment because so often on YouTube and everywhere else we are focused on how we look and productivity and trends and all of these kind of fleeting things right um, and a lot of the time when people discuss elegance and poise and being a well-rounded person they don't discuss one of the most important things that contributes to that and that is being curious and being interested and being well educated uh, and being a patron and an explorer of the arts and that is what we do here on the chic assignment we are bettering ourselves it's not just about the perfect lipstick and wearing a scarf a certain way um, this is about enriching our lives learning about things learning about artists and people and uh, reading poetry and making ourselves more well-rounded people. That's the most important part of being an elegant person. You could look like a million bucks, but if your head is empty, what is the good? So <laughs> all that to say that I do the chic assignment so that we can uh, do this together and really enjoy it and have fun. I know that as an adult, I find learning to be so much more fun than when I was a child. So I am having like a second uh, renaissance of my life as I learn about all of this. Okay, let's talk about Rumi and read some of his poetry and most interesting quotes. Now, because Rumi is a 13th century Sufi mystic poet, there's not that much on his life. I actually covered a lot of it in the introduction chic assignment at the beginning of this month. I encourage you to read about him. There's only a few paragraphs about his life. But today I wanted to focus on his poetry and reading it to you, and we can um, dissect some of these interesting things that he wrote here. So I'm going to read a, a few selections of the ones that stood out to me. I already read to you This Being Human is a Guest House, which is now one of my favorite poems. I love that. And this one is called I Am Thine and Thou Art Mine. Eternal life is gained by utter abandonment of one's own life. When God appears to his ardent lover, the lover is absorbed in him, and not so much as a hair of the lover remains. True lovers are always shadows, and when the sun shines in glory, the shadows vanish away. He is a true lover to God, whom God says, I am thine, and thou art mine. 
Okay, this one is called The Silence of Love. Love is the astrolab of God's mysteries. A lover may hanker after this love or that love, but at the last he is drawn to the king of love. However much we describe and explain love, when we fall in love we are ashamed of our words. Explanation by the tongue makes most things clear, but love unexplained is better. And here are some poems, some quotes uh, to continue his thoughts. This one is one of my favorites. Rumi wrote, Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Okay, this one says, The minute I heard my first love story, I started looking for you, not knowing how blind that was. Lovers don't finally meet somewhere. They're in each other all along. It's like there's nothing to say after you read these. There's nothing you could possibly say to make these even better. This one says, I want to see you, know your voice, recognize you when you first come round the corner, sense your scent when I come into a room you've just left, know the lift of your heel, the glide of your foot, become familiar with the way you purse your lips, then let them part just the slightest bit. When I lean into your space and kiss you, I want to know the joy of how you whisper more. That one, woo, that one's good. Okay. Here's another one. I said to the night, if you are in love with the moon, it is because you never stay for long. The night turned to me and said, it is not my fault. I never see the sun. How can I know that love is endless? You are the essence of the essence, the intoxication of love. I long to sing your praises, but stand mute with the agony of wishing it in my heart. And this is another one. Lovers find secret places inside this violent world where they make transactions with beauty. Okay, and now I wanted to share a few of his famous quotes. These are shorter and very deep. Don't be satisfied with stories, how things have gone with others. Unfold your own myth. I love that one because so many people can become um, kind of like obsessed with other people and their lives and we fixate on either celebrities or even here on YouTube people will fixate on me or or other people and and we I myself can fixate on stories and it's so important to realize that you need to unfold your own story you need to unfold your own myth um, otherwise you're just really wasting your time Everything that is made beautiful and fair and lovely is made for the eye of one who sees. I mean, that's, that's true, isn't it? <laughs> Why should I be unhappy? Every parcel of my being is in full bloom. This one's good for parents. Raise your words, not voice. It is rain that grows flowers, not thunder. That's a good one. Ignore those that make you fearful and sad, that degrade you back toward disease and death. That's a good one if you have haters, just totally ignore them. That's the best thing you can do. There is a candle in your heart ready to be kindled. There is a void in your soul ready to be filled. You feel it, don't you? Words are a pretext. It is the inner bond that draws one person to another, not words. Here's a great one. Set your life on fire. Seek those who fan your flames. I can't remember if I read this one in the last video or not, but this is good. The wound is the place where the light enters you. And we will end on this. You have to keep breaking your heart until it opens. So there are so many more, I mean, hundreds more, just beautiful, deep quotes. And uh, I understand why Rumi is considered the most popular poet in America, because every single thing you read from him can be um, come alive in a different way and just really speak to the individual person who is reading it. So he definitely had a gift and a talent. So I hope that you thoroughly enjoyed um, reading and exploring Rumi this month. Share your favorite Rumi quote with us down below in the comment section. So today we are going to talk about uh, Gabriel Foray and I recommended Pavan Opus 50 for you. And how beautiful was that piece? That piece was so perfect, hauntingly beautiful. I know a lot of you enjoyed it. Okay, let's jump right in now with Gabriel Foray. And I have pulled 10 interesting facts about Foray to share with you right now. And many of these are from a Classic FM article, which I will leave linked down below. Interesting fact number one, 
Born in Pommier in the south of France, Faure's musical talent became apparent when he was a boy. I grew up rather quiet, well-behaved child in an area of great beauty, he said, but the only thing I remember really clearly is the harmonium in that little chapel. Every time I could get away, I ran there. I played atrociously, but I do remember that I was happy, and if that is what it means to have a vocation, then it is a very pleasant thing. As we see with many of these artists, they discover their passion when they are children. So parents, be aware of your child and, and what they're passionate about. Interesting fact number two, meeting Saint-Saëns. Remember him from a previous Chic assignment? At nine, young Gabriel was sent to Paris to study to become a church organist and choir master. A few years later, Saint-Saëns took charge of piano studies and introduced contemporary music into the college, including works by Schumann, Liszt, and Wagner. Saint-Saëns took great interest in Faure's progress and a lifelong friendship was born. Interesting fact number three, Faure became a founding member of the Société Nationale de Musique, formed in February 1871 to promote new French music. Other members included Saint-Saëns, Bizet, Chabrier, Franck, and Massenet. Many of Faure's works were first presented at the Société's concerts. In January 1877, Faure, aged 31, had his first violin sonata performed at Société Nationale concert with great success. It marked a turning point in his composing career. Number four, summer retreat. Holding an impromptu post as an organist, as well as being director of the Paris Conservatoire, meant that Faure had to retreat to the countryside in the summer to concentrate on composing. He began his Requiem in 1887, revised and expanded it over the years until its final version dating from 1901. So we find this uh, theme as well uh, amongst artists, like Henry David Thoreau went to Walden, um, artists will go retreat somewhere. They must be alone in order to create. And this is something I can totally relate to. That's why it's hard <laughs> when you have a family to create, but you know, you can do it. Interesting fact number five, Foray and the Dolly Suite. In his late 40s, the married Foray fell in love with Emma Bardak. The affair inspired a burst of creativity and new originality in his music. Foray wrote the Dolly Suite for piano duet between 1894 and 1897 and dedicated it to Bardak's daughter, Helene, known as Dolly. Some people suspected that Foray was Dolly's father. Number six, Pavan. This, this is our piece. Foray's popular pavan was written for piano and choir in the late 1880s. He described it as elegant, but not otherwise important, intending it to be played more briskly than it has generally come to be performed. The choral lyrics were based on verses about the romantic helplessness of man. Interesting fact number seven, admired by Elgar. Foray was hugely popular in Britain. He visited often and even played at Buckingham Palace in 1908. He attended the London premiere of Elgar's first symphony that year and had dinner with Elgar afterwards. I admired him greatly, said Elgar, who tried to get Foray's Requiem put on at the Three Choirs Festival. And isn't it interesting that all of these composers that we study, they all knew each other. Number eight, he was honored by the state. By his last years, Faure was recognized in France as the leading French composer of his day. In 1920, at the age of 75, he received the Grand Croix of the Légion d'Honneur, a rare honor for a musician. His final years. Faure suffered from poor health in his later years, brought on by heavy smoking. Despite this, he remained available to teach and dispense advice to young composers, including members of Le Six, most of whom were devoted to him. He died in Paris from pneumonia on the 4th of November, 1924, at the age of 79. So that is a brief biography of Gabriel Faure, and interesting that he didn't think very much of Pavan, but I think very much of it. Chic assignment number three was to do a 15-minute declutter challenge, and I did one of those this month. I will leave the iCard up above, where I decluttered the toy bin, which had gotten a little out of hand. Now, I didn't show in there because of the fast forward what I got rid of, but I got rid of a giant white trash bag full of miscellaneous toys. And I'm really of the mind now that paring down toys and not providing so many toys for our children is the best thing to um, encourage their creativity. So that's why I only keep select ones in those bins and I like to keep them in categories. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you should watch the video and check it out. And it's just a great idea to put the timer on for 15 minutes and see how much you accomplish. 
And chic assignment number four is to transition your wardrobe for summer. So you will have seen my video that already posted this week about that. I do have an update with the white dress from Sky. It's beautiful and it's flowy and it's perfect for this hotter weather that we have been receiving. Apart from that and some beautiful jewelry choices like this Sky necklace, I don't have much that I'm updating my wardrobe with, but it's good to be intentional and ask yourself, how did my spring wardrobe perform? Is there anything that I would change or get rid of what do I need to do going into summer and so I would love to hear all of your input on the 10 item capsule wardrobe process down below and now I would like to give the elegant connoisseur mentions Amanda Dykes author of award-winning fiction written to light the dark and lift your heart Amy Floor from Azalea Spa Goods handcrafted aromatherapy body oils Brandy Still, silhouette artist, keeping alive the art of silhouette portraiture that dates back from 1700s France. Jenny Williams from Carrot Top Paper Shop, offering colorful literary wall art and book-themed gifts to inspire every woman to be the heroine of her life. Elaine Brisebois is a certified nutritionist and women's weight loss coach. Download her elegant eating handbook, Simple and Effective Strategies for Permanently Living at Your Natural Weight, to get started. Ashley Buffa from Freedom Moms, Learning to treat chores as a family team is the key to creating and maintaining a tidy, organized home, and it's attainable through the Freedom Moms Smart Kid Chore System. Carrie Van Hooser, author of Tis the Season for Poetry, Through the Year with Poems and Activities for Children and Their Families. Inspired by Nikki, YouTube channel and Etsy shop. Nikki creates beautiful aprons, stationery, and so much more. Julie Coleman from My Confident Closet, Julie helps you build a seasonal wardrobe that fits your style and budget. Nicole Brignol, founder of Lovely Bits, organic intimate care for women. Rosenda Valenzuela from Little Pink Casa YouTube channel, inspiring ladies in vintage homemaking, elegant lifestyle, feminine wardrobe, and romantic home. Mrs. Shockley from A Home for Elegance Dress Boutique. Visit her online at ahomeforelegance.com. Sarah Morgan Wellness. Sarah is a wellness coach for women specializing in helping busy women, especially moms, find manageable ways to meet their own health and wellness needs without the guilt. Learn more at sarahmorganwellness.com. Tina Hugal from OutSchool. Tina teaches history through biographies for ages 8 to 16. Michelle Rohr from The Secret Owl Society, digital planners and e-courses on how to create passive income from your own planning business. Learn more at secretowlsociety.org. Alan Scottish Shortbread uses their Scottish grandmother's heirloom family recipe to bake small batches of buttery shortbread that pairs perfectly with a pot of tea. Learn more at alanscottishshortbread.com. Stern Brothers Jewelry is a family-owned, custom-designed jewelry store specializing in making heirloom jewelry into something special for the next generation to cherish. Something to cherish, beautiful and meaningful products that promote the celebration and gift of life based off of the watercolor designs of artist Cherish Flyter. V-Cell Victoria, your Jaffra Beauty Consultant, featuring beautiful products such as Royal Jelly Skincare Rituals, Royal Almond Body Oils and Lotions, as well as Sumptuous Color. Special offers every month. And thank you to the following. Catherine Ray, Carly Tom from Living in Loveliness, Carolyn Haydu, Guy Blaze, Isabel Clabeau, Janice Leitner, Jen Carlson, Jet Rowley Heron, Gina K. Kenry, Jenny Candelaria, Juliette Keeler Lebas, Linda Eckloff, Marie Caudill, Maria Condor, Melissa M., and Prudently at Home. Thank you so much to the Elegant Connoisseurs and the entire Chic Society for bringing us the Chic Assignment check-in. If you're interested in joining the Chic Society, I will leave the link down below, or you could just press the join button on uh, next to the subscribe bar. I want to do an announcement that next month in August, there will be no Chic Assignment because I'm taking half of the month off. So um, we will not be having the Chic Assignment next month, but we will resume it in September. Thank you very much for joining us here. I hope you enjoyed this one. Keep calm and remain classy, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.